people can help me with my computer. Oh. A technician will be with you in four hours. Four hours? You can upgrade for just five thousand dollars. Universal Studios and Skateboard should be sent to ID six. I need that in plain English. Help! Leo Laporte to call for help. May I help you? Oh, hi, how are you? Welcome, good to see you. Time for call for help. I'm your humble host, host <laughs> Leo Laporte. Yes, I know, I'm, I'm sounding strange, aren't I? Does it sound strange? Is that me in my ears, or does it sound strange to you, Gabe? Yeah, it sounds... I, I'm, I'm getting over a cold. I feel great, but you know how that is. You get, your voice gets you down here. All of a sudden, I'll be talking like this. I'm the very white of computers, ladies and gentlemen. Get a little closer. Let's talk. If you have a computer question... Oh, baby... If you got a computer question, I want to I want to hear from you. This is the show where we talk about it. He's getting a little farther, isn't he? You don't have to back off, Gabe. I'm not going to kiss you or anything. Just, just right there, perfect. This is the show where we answer your computer questions. We have fun, obviously. We do it in plain English. We have to get the most out of the personal confuser. So if you've got a problem, I want to hear from you. We've got a, a number toll-free anywhere in North America, 888-989-7879. You can also email me, callforhelp at zdtv.com, and i got an email, you know, a program going all the time, getting the email. And if you send me something before the show's over, I'll see it. And a lot of times we answer those questions right away on the show. Same day service. And, of course, you can always get in the chat room. I'm in there right now. This is a great place to go if you want to participate with the wackos who are watching the show and chatting at the same time, the multitaskers. That would be the kind way to put it. Like me, we're sitting in the back there, and I invite you to go on in. It's a lot of fun. www.zdtv.com slash call for help. That's the email address, or the web page address. Click on interact. It gets in our chat room. All right, now, let's see. What do we got today on the show? Did you know that some of the free software uh, you download could be watching you? It's called spyware. We'll tell you what spyware is, how to get rid of it, where you get it from, the works. Okay. Plus, lots of people who have uh, problems with their computers after installing uh, the latest version of AOL. You know, there's actually a class action lawsuit. A, a guy's trying to collect $1,000 for everybody who's had this problem when they install AOL 5. We'll tell you what to look out for and how to get your PC back to normal, at least for some of the problems. But let's get to our, uh, our first call of the day. It's from Torrington, Connecticut. Tim is on the line. Hello, Tim. How you doing, Leo? I'm great. How are you? Not too bad. What can I do for you? Um, I'm having a little problem with uh, associating file types. Yes. Um, I'm trying to create a new type for active server pages. Oh, okay. So that if it's an .asp file, something will happen? Right. Okay. Um, and when I do that, it says that there's already one that exists. Right. But it's not in the list of registered file right. types. So let me explain all this, Tim, so everybody knows what we're talking about. This is a kind of an advanced question, but it's a good one because... Uh, people have problems with Windows and file types uh, all the time. The way Windows knows what to do when you double-click a document is by looking at the end, the last part of the file name, the thing that, the three letters that come after the dot. Sometimes it's four letters that come after the dot. Um, dot txt. If you have a dot txt file, you double-click it. In most cases, Windows will open Notepad. That's called the file name extension, and the connection between the program to run and the file name extension is called a file association. We've associated Notepad with .txt files. So almost every time you install an application, what it does is it says, okay, I'll be responsible for all the files that end with these three letters. You know, you install Microsoft Word. Now, normally a .doc file, before you install, install Word, .doc files are opened by WordPad, a program that comes with Windows. But when you install Word, Word says, Step back, WordPad. I am now in charge of .docs. So if Windows, if you get a, a, a message to open a .doc, I want to take it. Where can you see those associations? I'll show you. It's pretty simple. If you double-click, my computer is a good example, double-click any window, and you go to the View menu, as we have here, and you scroll down to the bottom of the View menu to Folder Options. Okay, now this is going to pop open a window here. And this is the folder options window. And then this tab here, views, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, file types, this tab here, <laughs> this one, that, that, that one. This is the one you want to look at. This is a list of all the file type associations. Now, Tim, you were looking for ASP. Yes. This is ASP right up the top here, active server document. 
ASP is currently owned by Internet Explorer. Actually, in this case, my position is it's front page, and that's because I have installed front page. Yours probably will be different. It's owned by Internet Explorer. ASP documents are web documents. Is that what you wanted to have happen, Tim? Yes. You wanted Internet Explorer to open it. Right. Is that not happening right now? That's not happening. Interesting. All right. Well, it's easy enough to create a new type, and I'll show you how to do this. But, folks, I want to tell you this is a black diamond tip because normally you wouldn't want to do this. What you would do is you would install an application. The application would do this for you. The reason you don't normally create a new type is if you're going to create a new type, you've got to have the application to see it. And if an application can see that file type, it will, in the normal course of the event, have already done what you're about to do. But, Tim, now you're saying, you say, I want to create a new type. And as soon as you enter in ASP, right here, associated extension, it says, sorry, somebody's got that. Right. And you can't find it anywhere. Right. Okay. This is an experts-only tip. Normally what you would do is you'd say what kind of... So actually, you know what, the easiest way to do this, let me open an existing one, and I'll show you what it looks like. The type here, in this case, is active server document. And this one looks a little bit different. And you, you have they define an action. If I edit the action, you'll see it, it, what it really does is it opens this particular program, front page, and the percent one here says using the document that's been double-clicked. This is why it's a black diamond tip. It's a fairly abstruse science that probably no normal human should ever delve into because as soon as you get in the guts of Windows, you're going to be sorry. You're going to end up like Tim, confused, baffled, and frustrated. Right, Tim? That's right. <laughs> so have you looked through all of these at everyone? And notice, you know, documents can have multiple extensions. For instance, active server documents here have ASP, ASA, and CDX. So you, what you've got to do is you've got to one by one click every one of these and see what extensions there are. Have you done that? Yep. And nothing, huh? Nothing. Well, I noticed that the only, you know, probably the only reason I have an association is because of front page. No, I guess the idea is Microsoft doesn't want you to save those and double click them. Okay. Uh, active server pages are database generated. They're not, they're not supposed to be static. Right. Why don't you save them as HTML? Okay. Then double clicking them will do what you want, which is open up Internet Explorer. All right. Okay, that, I mean, that's a kind of cheesy way to back yeah. out of the answer your question, but uh, all right. I think that's probably the only way to do it. I think well, probably what Windows is saying is, I don't want you to double-click those, guy. All right? All right. But I'm glad you called. It wasn't much help, but what we did do is we gave you uh, folks an understanding of a little bit of the gut of what goes on when Windows gets this double-click message of what to do. Here, for instance, is an example. I have a home page. Dot .shtml. doesn't know what that shtml is. It says, what is that? You know, I don't know what an shtml. Easiest way to do, to, to give it something, and again, you wouldn't normally have to do this, is to sh click the shift key, hold the shift key down, right click, and you'll see at the top, open with. And then what you do is you get a list of all the applications, and you can say, well, you know what, when you see shtml as an extension, I want... Internet Explorer to open it. And then if you check, check this box that says, always open this program type with this, always use this program up in this file. If you click that, you say, okay. Now what will happen is, see, it automatically opened. And from now on, see, it even gave it an icon. All of a sudden, from the generic icon, it has a, it has a, a, a Explorer icon. From now on, I can double-click this, and it will automatically open Explorer. So Tim, I'm sure, has tried that. But that's another way to do it. Shift, right-click. Select open with, and then you'll be able to add an application to open it with. More than you probably ever want to know about file associations, but that's what I specialize in. <laughs> Still to come on this show. Thank you, Tim. We're going to show you how to fight back if AOL 5.0 has been pushing you around. And right after the break, we're going to talk about spyware. That's something that can sneak onto your computer when you install certain free programs, and it could be watching you right now. Beware! We'll tell you how to get rid of those spies in just a bit. Where? I have a feeling I'm being watched. Like,
Leo Laporte here, Pete's on the line from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. Hello, Peter. What's up? What's up? They say that in Canada? Yeah. <laughs> they say, what's up, Hey. Yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> How you doing, Pete? Not too bad. Great to talk no. to you. What can I do for you? I was wondering if there was any download helper like Godzilla mm -hmm. that doesn't have any spyware in it. Spyware is a great topic. I want to talk about that. Let me, I have to define a couple of things. Godzilla, which is a program we, I love and use all the time and recommend, is kind of the classic case of spyware because it's actually owned by the king of spyware, Radiant. So let's show you this. This is, uh, or Orient, they're the same company. This is Godzilla. And let me close this here. Gozilla is a download helper, as you mentioned, Peter. What it does is when I go to a website and I download something, Gozilla helps me do it by uh, monitoring the download. It will, if the download fails, I can resume it, which is very important. How many times have you started a big download and it fails and you have to start it all over again? This one lets you resume it in many cases. It'll find a faster source if one exists. It's just a, you know, I don't download without it. I really love it. But notice in Gozilla this thing. It's an ad right here, an ad banner. Now, Godzilla is free, and there's a lot of programs doing this now that are free, and the reason they're free is because their authors make money off these ad banners. But in order for these ad banners to work, there has to be something behind the scenes that's putting new banners in there, rotating them, keeping track of how many times you've seen them so the, so the company can pay appropriately, right? If you think about it, there's got to be something going on in the background. That something is provided by a company called Radiant. And they're the folks who actually wrote Godzilla, and they help a lot of other programs. And the spyware is the issue. Now, it's, I don't think it's a huge issue, but you should know what you're getting into. And what the, the problem is they're not really upfront about what's going on behind the scenes. It's only because some people have discovered it that we even know that this is going on. Um, just to answer your question real quickly, if you pay for Godzilla... It is still uh, shareware. You, there's two versions of many of these programs. You can pay it for a version without the ad banner. If you do pay for it and the ad banner is gone, you can then eliminate the spyware, and there is no spyware involved. I see. Okay. So, and that's true of Get Right, which is another program uh, that's a download helper that I like a lot. I think Goes and Get Right are the two biggies. But in both cases, they do have these ad banners. In order to get rid of them, you have to pay. Let me show you a little bit about what all of this spyware thing is uh, all about. Um, a, a friend of ours, he, we've had him on the show, named Steve Gibson, was the first to really publicize this. Actually, what happened is a uh, message went out on the Internet that was actually really scary about this stuff. And Steve said, wait, wait, it's not that bad. And he explained exactly what happens. If you want to know more about it, go to his website. It's grc.com, the opt-out website. And he will explain exactly what happens. He's actually written a program that analyzes what happens. The spyware is merely an advertising banner server. It sits in the back of your computer. It is tracking your web visits, tracking, most importantly, how often you see the banner so it can pay money to the author. The thing that's bad about it is even if you uninstall Godzilla, you say, you know what, I don't like this idea of it, and you get rid of Godzilla, it does not uninstall the spyware software. The that's server right. remains there. So Steve wrote a program called Opt Out, and that's what this home page is all about, that will remove it after you uninstall it. Now, the problem is you can't run this and still use Godzilla unless you pay for it. If, you, if you're using the free version of Godzilla, you run Opt Out, it breaks Godzilla. It needs that spyware to work. That's right. I tried it. You did, so did I. That's how I know, too. I thought, oh, great, I'll get rid of it. So Now, just folks, so you know, Orient, which is the company that writes Godzilla and provides this spyware, there are three spyware companies. This is one of them. These are all the programs that uh, use the Orient server. These are all shareware, freeware programs. Look at all of them. This is Orient's website, which is, let me just check what the uh, URL is, Orient, A-U-R-E-A-T-E dot com. Yeah, actually, you can get there from Steve's site as well. Look at all of these. Hundreds of programs. It goes on and on. Basically, I think you, it would safe to assume if you see an ad banner in a program, a freeware program, it's using, if not Orient, some other spyware software. Now, right now, Steve's program only gets rid of the Orient stuff. We asked Steve. He said, yes, 
It will get rid of the Orient stuff. If you pay for Godzilla, you can continue to use it without the Orient stuff. He said he likes Get Right because the Get Right author is stays in touch with the opt-out message boards, has been participating. He's concerned about this. So if you want a recommendation, maybe Get Right, but it still has a spyware program in it. So, Pete, the answer to the question is yes, you can get rid of it. Pay for it. I happen to like, I think Godzilla is great. So if you really, if, I don't, I wouldn't worry about these things and not like sending your name and the programs you have out. It's not really inva an invasion of privacy as you might expect. It's no worse than the ad banner trackers that are on the web. It's pretty much the same thing. So I wouldn't worry about it. But if you do, if it does bother you, pay the 30, 40 bucks for Godzilla and then you don't have to think about it. Then run off out. You don't have to think about it. Okay, Peter? Okay, thank does that, you. Does that help you? Yeah, it yeah. does. And you know, I'll just, so you know what I do? I, I just use it. I'm paid for it. I figured, good, the author's getting some money. I get it for free. I'm not worried about the spyware. There's so many invasions of privacy out there. I don't know. You know, it's hard to judge which ones are worse, which ones are better. Um, I don't worry about this one. Coming up next, we're going to show you how to get your computer back to normal. Did you do this? Did you install AOL version 5, and all of a sudden, it changed everything. We're going to fix it for you. But first, test your technology in our daily quiz. Here's how this works. If you know the answer, you go to the website, ddtv.com slash call for help. You click on today's quiz, and you get this right, this quiz question. You're going to be in the drawing for a year's worth of wonderful learning classes at smartplanet.com. The quiz question of the day, what's the banner? What's the banner? We just saw some. Is it a browser plugin, an antivirus program, a web billboard, or the Hulk's alter ego? Is that Bob Banner? I think it was. David Banner. Bruce Banner. We should have another quiz tomorrow. <laughs> Get to the website, give us your answer, and we'll talk about it later on as Call for Help continues. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the center stage, where the Call for Help free file of the day is about to perform. Every day a free file just for you to check out, download, and enjoy. This is one we've shown before. It's called Third Voice. It's a new version, Third Voice 2000. It, it says it enhances your web browsing. It does have a system tray icon. See that one with a 3V down there? And if I double-click it, I can log in and so forth. And every time you go to a website, it scans it and underlines words or phrases that have websites associated with them. So I don't know. It's not doing it particularly well for me. Maybe I don't have it turned on. It also adds some tools to your toolbar here. And you can also use Third Voice to send a private note, have a confidential discussion, access built-in search, all web page based, so based on the page that you're visiting. 
It's in beta test, but uh, this is pretty stable uh, version. Uh, brand new, uh, Third Voice 2000. Uh, check it out at our free file of the day site, ddtv.com slash call for help. Meanwhile, let's, speaking of checking things out, let's check out our chatters, see what they're talking about. They're trying to decide if it's David or Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk. No, they're not. They're actually talking about collecting personal info and spyware and that kind of thing. You know, people who are monitoring your privacy. This is a discussion that's going to go on. It's an important discussion. We should all have this discussion about what kinds of things it's okay for the Internet to collect, what kinds of things not. My biggest concern is as long as they tell you what they're collecting, then I can make an informed choice. And the thing about spyware until recently was we didn't know it was there. And that's bad. So companies, just, if you're going to collect information, just tell us. Let us make the choice about whether we want to give it to you or not. Don't sneak behind our backs and take it from us. That's bad. That's a wrong thing to do. Join us in the chat room. I won't sneak behind your back. I'll tell you. We're in there right now. ZDTV.com slash call for help. We got an email the other day from David, uh, Albany, Oregon. David says, I've installed AOL 5, and Dan, if it didn't take over, how do I get AOL off my IE5 toolbar? It says, provided by AOL. <laughs> David, my friend, I've got some bad news for you. Submitted for your approval, the man who has just entered, a world out of sight, out of mind, a world where all control of his PC is gone. David, you've entered the AOL zone. Ah! Oh. I scared myself. It's actually, this one's easy to fix. AOL 5 does a number of things, ranging from, uh, if you say yes, becoming your default browser and email package, which is okay if that's the only one you're using, uh, changing your browser, you know, you get a new little AOL logo up there and it says provided by AOL, to something that's much worse. And, and I don't know how it does this. I haven't get, been able to recreate this, but we have confirmations from Internet service providers and users that say sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes if you have an existing Internet service provider and you install AOL, it clobbers the ISP so you can't get into them. We don't know how it does that. Uh, according to MindSpring uh, and, and, and Earthlink, I believe, they say, yeah, we, we think it's happening. We can't figure out why, and often it requires a reinstall of Windows. There are, I think, to my knowledge, at least two class action lawsuits that have been filed against America Online for this. I don't know what's going on, and if, and if I could find, if I could recreate, if I could get it to happen, I could tell you, but I don't know. I can tell you how to fix what's happening to David, and it's very simple. Let me just show you. I'm going to launch... Um, Internet Explorer, and look, right at the top it says, Call for Help, ZDTV, that's the webpage, and then it says, Internet Explorer, provided by, see right up here at the top, provided by America Online. Oh, isn't that nice? And you know what? AOL isn't the only people who do this. A lot of people do this. This is fairly common. Uh, in fact, if you downloaded Internet Explorer from the ZDNet software library, it would say, provided by ZDNet, which I find annoying, so I'll show you how to get rid of it. Easy! This is a free program you can download from the ZDNet software library. We've talked about it many times before. I encourage everybody to own it. It's not Tweak UI. It's a successor, a free program called Tweak Revisited. And it does so many things. It changes the Windows startup screen. It can change some desktop settings. It can do so much to who the computer is registered to. But here's the point you want. Click the Internet tab. And right here, change the text on the Internet Explorer title bar. Change it to Leo's Internet Fun buggy. Uh, I press apply. There's other things it can do, but I'll just do that. And now look at the top of my, go up to the top there and you'll see, instead of saying provided by America Online, it says Leo's Internet Fun Buggy or whatever you want. Great program. Highly recommend it. Tweak Revisited. We do have an article, I think. Is it on here? Did we uh, get the article on here on how to remove the rest of the stuff from AOL? I wrote one. I'll tell you what. We'll find it, and I'll get it up there if it's not up there already. Um, but that will fix the main issue, which is getting that silly title bar off. And we'll keep you posted on the rest of it. If we can recreate it, we'll let you know how to get around it. Folks, you stick around. Coming up, we're going to check in with our friends in the newsroom and get our Mac World Mac tip of the day. Chris Breen is here when calls for help. <laughs>
Welcome back to Call for Help. I'm Leo Laporte, taking your calls, answering your questions, talking high tech, and having some fun while we're doing it. I'm glad you're watching the show. We really appreciate it. Now, if you wanted to get on the show via net cam, but you say, I'm not home when the show's on or I'm eating dinner or whatever, you could always record and send us a video email with your net cam. We have a special address for that. That's cfhvmail at zdtv.com. There it is on the screen. Send it along. We'd love to see it. All right. Meanwhile, get in the chat room. Oh, I'm not in the chat room. Let me get in the chat room. Go to www. Oh, I'm in the Macquarian today. The green eyeball in the Macquarian. www.zdtv.com slash call for help. That's our chat. Uh, that's actually our web page. And then click on interact to get in the uh, chat room. And we'll see you in there. Let's check in right now with our colleagues in the ZDTV newsroom. See what's going on in the world around us. Erica Hill is here. Hello, Hello, you look so worried. Hello, Erica. I look worried. You look worried. You like, know why? Why? You sound a little stuffy. I'm worried. I'm Maybe you're not going to make it to the Bahamas. I promise. Oh, I will. And if I don't go, you're like the runner-up in Miss America. <laughs> you are. If I, anything should happen to me, you will take my place, I bet. That's great. You know I was a runner-up for Miss Connecticut once? No. <laughs> Just kidding. I believe it, though. <laughs> no, no, not even close. You look like you got a little dead from the tiara right up there, like you could be... Never mind. That was a Halloween costume. <laughs> Separate issue. Well, I think she was, and she's trying to cover it up. No, I really wasn't. I think she was. You can call my mom and ask. I will. <laughs> so what's going on, Erica? Today we're talking Napster. Oh, boy. Can't seem to get away from it. You know, it's a battle brewing in cyberspace, Leo. On one side, you've got Metallica and the Recording Industry Association of America. On the other, Napster and its new ally, Limp Bizkit. After spending $1.8 million to sponsor a free concert tour by the Hard Rock Band, Jennifer Mack takes a look at the latest development. Limp Bizkit wanted to do this tour as a thank you to give back to their fans. And Napster as a company is about two things. We're about the fans and we're about the band. So this is the perfect tour for us to support. Not everyone agrees with what Napster says it's about. The company continues to face a lawsuit for copyright infringement from Metallica and the Recording Industry Association of America. They're upset for um, the basic reason that this master and other services can be used uh, to allow uh, copyrighted uh, recording songs and other, and other information to be transmitted without any money going to either the artist or the recording industry. Earlier this week, Metallica announced it has dropped the University of Southern California from its lawsuit. USC says it will only let students use the program under direct supervision and only for legal purposes. Indiana University and Yale University were also dropped from the lawsuit after they agreed to block the program from their networks. Napster seems to be experiencing some technical difficulties right now, but if it was working, here's why everybody's so upset. It lets you access the music stored on other people's hard drives. So, for instance, let's say you wanted the latest song from Britney Spears. You'd go to your keyboard, type in Britney Spears, and it would download that music directly to your computer without any visit to the record store. I think that there's going to need to be a change in, in the way that um, entertainment services are distributed. And I think that uh, uh, it may be that the entertainment industry has to uh, figure out a new model um, to, to protect uh, what it is that they, that they rightfully do own. In the meantime, watch out. According to Bernstein, if you've downloaded music using Napster, you could be sued as well. If you haven't bought it and you, you buy it from someone, or you get it for free from someone uh, without purchasing it, then you are a copyright violator just like uh, anyone else that, you know, took the CD, let's say, uh, out of a store. That was Jennifer Mack reporting. Now, this is shaping up to be an issue that's likely to divide the entire music industry. Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich says using Napster is trafficking in stolen, stolen goods, excuse me. But Limp Bizkit singer Fred Durst called the service amazing and says he thinks it's a great way to promote music. Either way, most analysts are saying the lawsuit marks a turning point for music on the Internet. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's a total... Um Dichotomy, and you ask two musicians, you get two different answers. And yeah. I think what we have to do is really kind of reassess how we distribute music and all that stuff. That's By the way, do you say Limp Bizkit or Limp Bizkit? I say Bizkit, but... Spelled Bizkit. It is spelled Bizkit. Okay. If you prefer, I can make sure that every time I'm on no, call for help, no, it comes I, up. <laughs> I just wanted you to say Bizkit. Bizkit? Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Erica. Thank we'll talk you. to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. I'm in trouble now. 
For more on this story, and I really think this is fascinating, this, this issue, this Napster issue. And, I, you know, basically, I believe if you, like, if you like the music, buy the music, right? It's pretty simple. The person who created it deserves to be paid. But we've got to find a way to distribute this stuff, that's for sure. We'll be covering this story, I'm sure, for years to come. And you can find all the greatest, best coverage of all tech stories at the ZDTV News Reports. They're on every day on ZDTV or at the website at ZDTV.com. It's time for the Mac World Mac Tip of the Day. Oh, we got a good one today. Avoiding the Power Book Sync Crash. Sounds like the next Neil Stevenson novel. Here to tell us it all is. about it, Chris Green. <laughs> the next Neil Stevenson novel. <laughs> the Power Book Sync Crash. Yes. Yes. What is your power book sync crash? Well, it's this funny little bug. When you synchronize between your power book and your desktop machine, mm-hmm. if you use customized icons for your folders, blammo. But everybody uses customized icons. You mean instead of having the kind of generic icons, you put like a little happy face? Yeah, you put a little like, happy face on there or something. If you try to synchronize the two under OS 9, oh, blammo. Well, that's bad. Yeah. How do we fix that? Well, I need a little visual aid for you. Okay. Okay. That's so, my job. Okay. So could you just kind of do this for a while? pretty annoying, isn't it? Yeah. So, but it feels good when I so stop. So what's the solution, right? <laughs> don't do don't it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So don't use That's custom. the solution. Don't but use I don't like custom. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't do it. Now, let me ask you, does custom count for, you know, sometimes Apple automatically does custom, like your system folder has custom icons, Those documents folder. Those are not folder. technically customized icons. Those are Apple-approved icons. Okay. Those are okay. We're not talking about those. No. But here, for example, on the desktop here, I've got one here that I'm syn- synchronizing to the desktop machine. Right. I will do command I. Okay. Get info. No, yeah. I'm not going to crash it. Then I highlight this thing by clicking on it. I do Command X to get or, or rid of it. Space would do that. Yeah, right. It's right. And there it is. It's back to action. Eric icon normal. And now, now okay. can I have some customized, but just not that one? Oh yeah, you can have customized icons as long as you're not synchronizing to a folder that uh, has a customized icon. So the one, the folders you're going to put on your PowerBook, don't customize them. Right. That's easy. Yeah. Okay. That's fun. Yeah, and then you stop, <laughs> and it goes away. I have a red mark. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. You really well. appreciate it. Good tip. And I, you must be doing all these power book tips because you know that I, I'm just about to buy one. I know. Things, I know. So I, another thing I can't do with it. Coming up next, <laughs> we'll hand it over the phones and answer your computer questions in just a minute. As call for help continues. Hey, the batteries are dead. It's your fault. Hello, hello. Thank you. 
There it is, the lovely and talented call for help webpage, chock full of goodness. This week, it's Graphics Week. I invite you to click the Graphics Week logo and take a look at all our Graphic Weeks, Graphics Week answers and tips. Lots of great stuff, uh, links to uh, all sorts of things we've talked about on Call for Help and a whole lot more. ZDTV.com slash call for help. Time now for our next call. We're going to see if we can get a couple in this uh, in this section here. So, Luke, you're next uh, from Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, Luke. Hey, Leo. Hi, did you go see Jim Lauder back when he was in your town? No, I didn't. Oh, I had to Yeah. I was, I did, I, we did a thing in Nashville about a year ago. I had a great time there. I hope we get to go back soon. Nice. Okay. Time. What can um, I do for you? heard some rumors about Millennium. Yes. Coming out. Windows yeah. ME. <laughs> That's the next edition of Windows, Windows 98. The next edition is Windows Millennium Edition, and they want you to call it Windows Me, <laughs> which is why I'm not going to call it that. From what I've heard, yeah. Microsoft has somehow introduced a bug that when you run Netscape, it will crash. Right. Um, I heard this from a beta tester. Right. But well, let me assure have... you that if such a bug exists, and I installed ME and I played with it and I didn't have any problems with Netscape, but let me assure you that if such a thing does exist, Microsoft will be fixing it before they ship. Given the problems they're having with the Department of Justice right now, do you think they're going to make that happen? Nah. No. I understand it They'll fix has that. a fix, it just uninstalls it. Yeah. No, <laughs> believe me, believe me. You know, there was an old saying, uh, 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 Windows ain't done till Lotus won't run. This is in the old days when Microsoft was trying to compete with Lotus. There have been rumors like this as long as Microsoft's been around. They're not that stupid. They wouldn't do that. That's exactly the kind of monopolistic behavior they, they got in trouble for. Believe me, if I can guarantee you 100%, Netscape will work great on Windows Millennium when it ships. If it doesn't, they're in deep trouble. Hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Let's move on to uh, Lewiston, Idaho. Our next caller is Bob. Hello, Bob. How's it going, Leo? Uh, it's going great. What can I do for you? Well, I have an uh, annoying little problem. Yeah. Whenever I download something from the Internet and yeah. it asks me to reboot my computer mm -hmm. and my printer's on, yeah. my um, at the startup, it'll my wizard will detect my printer and say it's, um, it's found new hardware. And it wants, wants to reinstall, reinstall it. it. Yeah. This is uh, Microsoft has this thing called plug and play, and the idea, a good idea, is when there's new hardware installed, it goes, ah, hello, and reinstalls it. But it doesn't always work. Now, is your printer a USB printer or a parallel port printer? It's a parallel port, I okay. believe. Okay. It's not unusual. In fact, this does happen with USB devices. Whenever it sees a USB device, it will briefly say installing the software for it. That's normal. It's not normal on a printer port device. What it means is that plug and play is a little bit confused. There's no absolute fix for this, but let me show you what I do, because it happens to me, it happens to everybody. When I see this happening to me, what I do is I go to the system control panel, and I click the device manager, and what you'll do is you'll go to the printer area, and you actually want to delete. I don't have a printer installed here, so I'll take something else. Let's take a SCSI controller. I'll actually delete the entry for this. I'll press remove and make it go away. Now, what that's going to do is guarantee that the next time you reinstall or restart Windows, it's going to look, say, oh, I see the printer. And you'll go through the installation. But normally when you do this, it takes, and the next time it won't ask you again. Okay? So, so basically what you want to do is kind of say to Windows, oh, you're right. I need to reinstall this printer and let it do it and then hope it doesn't ask you again. Do this a couple of times if you have to, but honestly, eventually that will go away. Just keep deleting that printer until it finally goes, oh, yeah, that printer, I recognize you. Okay? Okay, thanks. All right. Hey, thanks, Bob. I appreciate the call. Uh -huh. I'm glad you asked because this happens to everybody. It happens to me all the time. That's the best way to fix it. Coming up next, they're known in some circles as hydras. Why? Because, well, it's like they have nine heads. They're printers, scanners, fax machines, copiers, all in one. And they can save a lot of space on your desk. But are they a good buy? We'll find out. A we'll call for help continue.
Welcome back to Call for Help. I'm Leo Laporte. If you are uh, setting yourself up to uh, work from home, you could go out and buy a printer. Oh, and I'm going to need a copier. I guess I should get a scanner. I need a fax machine. By that time, you got four devices and no desk space for your computer. You might want to think about something called a multifunctional printer. It's one machine that combines all that stuff into one unit here to show us some of the latest all-in-one models is ZDTV's home product analyst, James Kim. Hello, James. Hello. Leo. Welcome back. You brought some. I brought three, and uh, two of them are colossal. They, this is They huge. were very heavy. I don't know if this is going to say dead space. I don't know. Big. But uh, let's start with this one. This is tiny. This is no bigger than these, uh, a large printer, a large... Yeah, these, these things have come a long way, Leo. Okay. Uh, this one is was actually the very first one available for the Mac, mm-hmm. multifunctional printer, or Hydra, as we like to call it. A Canon C635. This is a USB and parallel uh, multifunctional printer. It okay. scans, faxes, copies, prints. Wow, that's great. Now, and are these typically inkjet printers in here? Oh, yes, okay. absolutely. Um, so they they do have laser versions, but uh, we're only going to deal with yeah, Those would be awfully expensive. Uh, this, we're talking about uh, 600 by 600 DPI uh, print-wise. Okay. Basically, what they've done is packaged the, their lowest, uh, lowest end Canon printer right. and then added like a... You know, medium range uh, scanner so, and uh, fax. So it's a bubble jet. It yeah. has pretty good color. Not bad. Pretty decent. It's washed out. Yeah, if you put that up against uh, like a $400 printer, uh, it doesn't right. even compare. But look, it does a good job. Now, the scanner, is it like a uh, like a fax machine scanner? Is that how it works? Where you, where you feed the paper yeah, in? Yeah, it feeds okay. and uh, does a pretty decent job. The thing about these machines is that. Uh, Although they they do all kinds of things, mm-hmm. they're, they're master of none. Jack of all trades, master of none. Right, that's always been the wrap so, on these. Yeah, this this particular model, it's good for uh, Soho users, small office, right. home office. Uh, this thing costs about three hundred eighty dollars, which is three hundred three hundred dollars street, which is about the lowest in that. Uh, okay. For the low low end, but you know you're getting a scanner and a printer, so right. putting those two together, three hundred dollars is about what you'd pay anyway. Yeah, this, this is something that my wife was thinking about getting. She's right. a student. Now, it, uh, the one thing, other thing is, of course, if one thing breaks, the the, you know, the whole thing's got to go. Yeah, in. It's, it's, it's like one of those TV VCR right, right. combo sets. Well, let's now, move up a, a, a notch. Here. Okay, let's move up to the next the level. Epson? This is the Epson Stylus Scan 2500 Pro. Now this looks more like a scanner than a printer. Yeah, this is actually three of the four. It doesn't have a fax. Okay, and they ha- they have a fax. Um, you know, most people have a fax with their modem. Exactly. The fax might be overkill anyway. The uh, the software that it comes with actually integrates in all the functions and adds a PC fax functionality. So you can okay. scan something and then fax it immediately. Okay. Uh, this thing is really nice for, um, you know, Epson's great for digital imaging. Is this, is this lid is this where the scanner is, is yeah. inside there? Okay. That's where you can copy and scan. This thing right here. That looks like a more traditional this? scanner. This you can actually put on top. A and it's a... Uh, Document feeder, ADF. Okay. And so if you have large volumes, you know, you can take it. How much is that, that actually? That thing costs about $550. Okay. You like it? I think it's great. It's got uh, amazing print quality, mm-hmm. 1440 by 720. That's very good. Good color. Uh, excellent color. The scanning is excellent. Great. Uh, we're talking about 36-bit color, um, 600 by 2400 DPI. Okay. So definitely... Um, that's the color DPI. The 1440 was the black and white. Right. DPI. Okay. No, the 1440, 720 was the print DPI. So, oh, so confused. Oh, all right. So the print is that the output quality, and you're exactly. saying the scanner input quality mm-hmm. is a half that. Yes. Okay, got it. And, and I, we really like Epson products, and uh, they've managed to put you know, three of those things together in a nice little package without sacrificing quality yeah. too much, which is what we see in a lot of uh, multifunctional. Now, now, this big honking monster, this has <laughs> got to cost a lot, a pretty penny. What is this? Well, this is a, a lot of people like this. We love this thing. This is the one you like It's best. very big. Yeah, it's, these things are supposed to space save. But imagine taking four of these units yeah. and putting them on your desk. Yeah, it's like, going up this, instead this, of out, yeah, right? This is still, that's, that one's actually heavier. Really? I, I okay. listed both of these. So this is the scanner slash copier lid in there. The reason people love it so much, uh, it's very fast. Yeah. Great. Uh, actually, you said it was fast. Let's do it. Should we do some? Okay. This yeah, is um, actually. You have one in there? Uh, this is one of the, uh, this is an example of what printed yeah. out. We can okay. compare it to the Canon right here. Okay. Yeah. Will I get a quick shot of that? All right. Anyway, that's pretty good. That's actually yeah, it's really, really nice. nice. Okay. It's among the best I've seen. Really? All right. So, so we're going to take this, put this here. And we're using photo paper, of course, folks. What we're, what we're going to do here is uh, uh, copy this in color. So we're just going to put it in the, probably the... So I didn't need a computer to do that. This is a right. standalone Standalone. This and you is, press one button and boom, it's gone. Right. This is at uh, medium speed, so... How long is that going to take? Uh, probably about 
20, 25 seconds for one page. Really? But the cool thing, you can... Oh, that's great. You can load uh, pages in What's the memory. What's that Are we out of paper? Uh, I think... All right. Well, that doesn't matter. Anyway, the point is you can uh, copy up to 99 multiple uh, pages. Right. Uh, this... So it comes with the sheet feeder. You don't need to buy it. Right, it right. Okay. And... Um, I don't know what this sound is, but, happy. but uh, when I was using it earlier... Off hook. Oh, really? You're off oh. hook. Let's stop that fax. Ah, we, we were faxing. Okay, now now we'll try it. <laughs> Here we go. It's working. All right. Anyway, th this is the perfect solution for anyone who needs at least two of the four functions. How much is that? This thing costs $800. Okay. $800, and, this, and be aware of the software that comes with it. Uh, this is a great uh, integrator. Good bundle. Exactly. Okay, great. You, you just open up one... Uh, one one program and it uh, allows you to scan. What's the that. bottom line on these uh, on these hydrants? Bottom line is that uh, these things have come a long way. Before they were a little I wasn't crazy, a little about sketchy them before, before yeah. because you know you weren't getting the greatest quality or yeah, the fastest speed. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, this model you're still you're still there. The Canon is still a little low. Eighty dollars, but okay. it's pretty low end. These two though, especially that one for photography enthusiasts because it's got great scan and okay. printouts. This one for the uh, home office, I would definitely look at this. That's the uh, the HP exactly. and the office. Hey, thank mm -hmm. you very much. If you want to know more about this, of course, read James' article on the Call for Help website, zdtv.com slash call for help. Well, final word right after this. Hey, it's coming out. Look. <laughs> final. That's good. That's good. So that's a plain paper cup. Welcome back to Call for Help. Before the break, we asked you what a banner was. Actually, we, we did it a few breaks ago. The answer is, of course, the web billboard. It's an image that sits in software on a website to advertise a product or service. Banner ads. And I think increasingly the thinking is they ain't doing such a good job. Now you're seeing all sorts of other kinds of advertising on the Internet. But banner ads are still predominant. All right, let's check in with the Call for Help chatters, see what they're talking about on today's show. And they seem to like to talk about those those hydras, that's what James calls them. Those are those multifunction printer, scanner, fax, copier combos. Uh, a good idea, you know, if you're looking for advice on what to buy, these guys have tried it all, guys and gals. Go on into the chat room, you get some great advice. Wonderful, smart people in there. Maybe you're one of them. ZDTV.com slash call for help. Click on the interact button. Meanwhile, let's check in with uh, some of the emailers. We get so much email during the show, I'm going to try to get to a couple of them. Sean from Granite City, Illinois, said he uses Get Right, which is a like Gozilla, another great program. He ran an opt-out, and Get Right continued to work fine. Same with Laplink FTP. Not, you know, that may be true, only I don't know, but 
Opt-out only removes the Orient. Uh, spyware. There are other companies that do spyware. So if you if you run it on a program that is using another company's spyware, it's not necessarily going to get rid of their spyware. But uh, nonetheless, uh, a number of people said get right works fine without the uh, spyware. So that's that's a good tip. I like get right a lot. Um, why doesn't AOL use Netscape instead of Internet Explorer? Well, they had a contract with Microsoft. This was before they bought Netscape. That contract runs out at the end of the year. Steve Case said, we're going to put Netscape in the next version of America Online as quickly as we can. Let me see what else here. Oh, Noel, my 42nd biggest fan, says the name was Bruce Banner. Of, we're talking about the Hulk. Bruce Banner in the comics, David Banner on the television show. That explains the confusion. And finally, uh, Art Man of Louisville, Kentucky says he recommends Download Accelerator Plus. This is a, another download helper. He says it does everything Godzilla, Godzilla does and then some without the spyware. you got to like that. Great tip. I was not familiar with that program, Art Man. I'll download it and try it and give you a report. Uh, and I'll put the link to this software in the email we send out after every show. Hey, thank you all for emailing, writing, watching. We really appreciate it. It's great to have you here. Coming up on the next call for help, you've probably been hearing a lot about electronic postage lately. That's where you print stamps on your computer. Are we all going to be doing that? Do we want to? Is it easy? Does it cost more? We'll take a look at the options and sort them all out. That's on the next call for help. Meanwhile, that's all for this edition. I'm Leo Laporte. I thank you for joining me on this trip down memory lane. The signpost up ahead. If you've got a burning question about your personal computer, just call for help. Okay. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. These glasses make me look fast.